Oh my God, let the party begin. Let the party begin. Let the party begin. Stop, 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 stop. I don't want that one. Woo, let the party begin. Woo. Well, this is the first time we are ever live on the Christian Witches YouTube channel and the Christian Witches Facebook at the same time. Oh my God. <laughs> it's book launch time, family. Oh my God. I've got to show you something. Oh, the baby is finally here. The baby is finally here after, man, it took me a, a minute to push this one out. This baby was no joke. She's here. Confessions of a Christian witch. So we're at the book launch party today, and today I'm going to answer some of the tried and true over and over and over questions we receive at Christian Witches. How's that sound? Questions that we receive, big, big questions that we receive over and over and over again. I'm going to tell you the story of the book, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about <laughs> this whole witness thing. As you know, uh, ex-Jehovah's Witness is on the book. A former Jehovah's Witness is the one that's giving you uh, this story today. So we just got so much good going on. So let, let me show you the cover of the book, first of all. Ah! Confessions of a Christian Witch. It is available right now on Amazon. And it is the Kindle. So go pick her up. Only $9.99. There she is right there on Amazon. And I pray by the time we complete today, you all on the Christian Witches Facebook fan page, you all pick the cover. And I pray by the time we finish today, she's a number one bestseller on uh, on uh, the incredible uh, Amazon. So let's talk about, there she is, I'm turning on, on YouTube and on Facebook. So there are four questions I want to answer. Number one, what is a Christian witch? Number two, what about the Bible? Doesn't the Bible say you can't be a Christian witch? Number three, how do you get started? And number four, I'll share you, with you a little bit about my own journey and how I came to know I'm a Christian witch. How's that sound? And we'll answer any of your questions as well. So if we haven't met, I am Reverend Valerie Love, also known as Kaisi, Divine Midwife of Soul Destiny and a Christian witch, practicing Christian witch, and the author now of uh, 16 books on practical spirituality with this book. I'm so thankful to you. I'm so thankful to be here. We're streaming live on both the Christian Witches YouTube channel and the Christian Witches Facebook fan page. And so if you don't know about both, make sure you join both. Christian Witches will be coming out with a lot of content on the YouTube channel all about how to do what we do. Ah, it's 11-11. Let's say our prayer. We got our 11-11 prayer. So, a prayer for beautiful manifestation of your dreams and your desires. Deep breath. It is. Woo, I have the God bumps. 11 11 on 11 11 11. Woo! A deep breath and pause and simply cast your desires through the cosmic doorway, knowing that the universe has a portal wide open right now wide open and spirit we pour forth the energy of our dreams and desires as a matching vibration to it knowing that as we match what we most desire in constitution then it becomes ours by divine birthright and by right of consciousness and so here we don't manipulate we vibrate and we're so thankful that it is all done in elegance, abundance, excellence, opulence, so mode it be. Ashe. So, welcome to the 1111. 
and this whole book launch party on 1111. Isn't it incredible? It's incredible, incredible, incredible. So if you have questions, by all means, pop your questions in the chat. So first we're going to talk, because the Christians say, you can't, no such thing as a Christian witch. The witches, a lot of witch honors what we're about here at Christian Witches. Now, I don't speak for all witches everywhere, and I certainly don't speak for all Christian witches. I make that clear in the book. I'm sharing here with you my own journey, and your journey is so personal to you. So here's where it came from. On October 22nd, 2011, I came out of the broom closet as a Christian witch on YouTube. Now, this was at my my main YouTube channel, which is ValerieLoveTV.com. And I did not know that I was going to say I was a Christian witch. I did not know that. I did not really even consider myself a Christian witch. This is exactly what happened. I woke up that morning. I received the inspiration. Share your story. Now, that's not unusual for me because I have a YouTube channel, so... And I'm, I'm a teacher and I've been on this path of teaching, leading workshops, being an author since 2005. Okay, so about 13 years now of really studying and sharing and, and being, living what I know to be my destiny. So I got the inspiration that morning to wake up and share my story. I said, okay, about being magical and being really in love with Christ. Okay, that's me. Jesus is my dude. Christ is my dude. I'm not giving up Christ for nobody, period. That's just how I roll. So I woke up that morning and, and I was really conflicted for years because my witch was on one side and my Christian was on the other side. Neither one was given and neither one was going away. <laughs> they was just at loggerheads, right? So, something says, the inspiration says, share your story. I said, okay. I woke up that morning. I got my little makeup on or whatever, whatever. Put on the video. Started talking. Now, this was not a live video. This was a recorded video. So, I started talking on the video. And I say, yes, and you know, and this is what's been happening for me. And so, and so, and so, and so. And as I'm sharing, you know, straight from the heart, straight from the heart, not thinking about what I'm going to say. Here comes the words, Christian witch out my mouth. And I'm like. I keep going. You can watch the video if you want. It's at ValerieLoveTV.com, how I became a Christian witch. If you just Google Christian witch, you'll find me. So it came out and I'm like, what was that? <laughs> but I just kept on going, right? What was that? You ever say something and you go like, who, who said that? You know that it came from somewhere beyond your human, your human self, right? Well, that's what was happening for me. So, okay. I continue, when I end the video, I sit there in shock, like, did I just say Christian witch? Oh, hell no, God. Nah, nah, God, y'all setting me up again. I was looking at heaven like, now I'm a minister, right? I'm sitting there looking at heaven like, nah, 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 nah. Y'all setting me up again, heaven. Because this is the, 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 about the fourth lifetime I came in magical. I got burned at the stake once. I got drowned another time. Still deathly afraid of water. <laughs> it got drowned in another lifetime. And another lifetime I was being magical and I had some, some demon something and, and got taken out by a demon. No, nah, no. Nah. And plus people hate me. Nah. <laughs> no. Nah. Christian witch. And I almost started to delete the video. <laughs> I was like, oh no, they ain't roasting me over the coals. No way. No I got better things to do with my life than get raked over the coals. I knew what was going to happen, right? Well, that's what I was making up in my head. Something in me was stronger. It wouldn't let me not post the video. Something in me just kept me moving because as I have come to understand on this magical path, we are, there's no such thing as I. There is I am, and there is a great current moving as your life. And the best thing that you can do is say yes to it and get on board with it, not try to make it up yourself. So there was this great current moving, and I said, well, let me be, and I knew it was God, love, let me be on board. I uploaded the video. 
and oh my god it was on now that video has hundreds now the video went viral it has like i think as of this moment about 150,000 plus video views on youtube it's one of our top videos on the channel right and uh the youtube channel very thankfully thank god has millions of views now we have helped millions of people around the world so elated to say that like that's amazing this youtube channel has millions of views that could represent millions of people or it could represent one person watching it millions of times <laughs> But I know that so many people watch us, right? So the video goes viral. People are looking at it. And then here comes the onslaught. Hate, 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 hate a raid from Christians, right? Hate a raid from Christians. Because they're like, oh my God, you can't be a Christian witch. You worship the devil. You from the devil. You going to hell. <laughs> whole Christian thing. You know, then I have the witchy thing. No such thing as a Christian witch. Yeah, oh man, people's keyboards was on fire. <laughs> it was like, and they devices, it was like they couldn't get the messages out there fast enough. You crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. You going straight to hell. Damnation. Oh my God. And then the witches were saying, you obviously don't know anything about witchcraft because witchcraft is inherently opposed to the Bible. Blah, 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 blah. So, that was going on for a while. And I'll tell you one thing, it was scary. It was freaking scary. And I'll tell you one thing, I was like, you know what? I don't need this in my life. But what was really happening is I was being invited into the life of being a true life changer on planet Earth, a true global uh, inspiration, a not of my own accord, of my own accord, I do no thing. Humbly, I am thankful that God, Goddess, I am, gave me a job to do in concert with my own soul to change the world, just like you have a job and a mission and an assignment to change the whole world, everyone does. And when you start stepping up to the plate to that assignment, I promise you there will be people that will oppose. That is exactly what happens the second you stand up. Here comes opposition, and that's to be expected. It happened with all the greats. It happened with Harriet Tubman. It happened with Martin Luther King, uh, Edgar, um, Medgar Evers, uh, Madiba, our beloved Nelson Mandela. Everyone, everyone who has stood for something. You know, even Mother Teresa, the Pope, was like, what? You want to come out of being a cloistered nun? You're a cloistered nun. She had to even kind of go against the Catholic Church to do what she was going to do. You know, there's always going to be the naysayers. There's always going to be people. When you come and you upset the status quo, people are not going to be okay with that, okay? By the way, smash that like button baby you know how we do around here smash that share button i believe that this i'm wearing marie laveau today all my hats are named after witches are love we're live on the christian witches facebook fan page and we're live on the christian witches youtube channel this is the first time we've ever been live on the christian witches youtube channel so ah, subscribe to the channel so the video goes crazy people are commenting all over the place and what i am deeply happy about is that we opened that global conversation, that nest egg. Uh, I don't want to say nest egg. What, what am I thinking about? That, that nest, that hornet's nest, really, of all the people that, you know, don't believe, the people that don't want to hear it, the people that never heard of it before and don't like it. All good. Now, I want to share with you something because... The first time this book came out, this was her first edition. Yes, the book is 500 pages. It's a tome, okay? So if you want to get it now, hop on over. This is a book launch party, so hop on over to Amazon, and you'll see Confessions of a Christian Witch. And if someone be so kind to put it in the chat, the link in the chat for us on Facebook, that would be so helpful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And there you have it, Christian Witches. So, and by the way, the Christian Witches, you on Facebook, you chose the cover. So, this was the original book, Confessions of a Christian Witch, right? And there are only 11 copies of this book in the world. 
This book came out in 2014. 2014, somewhere around there. Yeah, 2014. Originally on 11 2014. I'll show you the book. I'm not sure if you can see it. 11 2014. Can you see that? So this book came out four years ago, originally. And I got afraid. That's what really happened. I got afraid. I got the book in my hands. People, people started buying it. It sold like 10 copies just like that. And I turned off the, the, uh, the publication. I took it out of publication. I was afraid. Now, of course, I said, oh, I want to edit it more. I want to add some more things to it. I want to, you know, I found a lot of things that I want to create, uh, correct. That was really fear, okay? And that was really fear. Thank you, Gina, for putting the link in the chat for us. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. So here's what happened in all the hullabaloo of me coming out as a Christian witch on October 22nd, 2011. That video is still on YouTube. Here's what came out of it. Yes, there were the naysayers. Yes, there were the Christians who said you can't be a Christian witch, no such thing. Yes, there were the witches who said you can't be a Christian witch, no such thing. But beyond that, <clears throat> beyond that, were the people who said, Reverend Val, you speak into my heart. Oh my God, I got the same thing. Oh my goodness, I'm I'm hiding a tarot deck from my Baptist friends. I got the gall bumps now. Oh my God, I've got crystals, but my friends are calling me uh, the devil and they want to throw holy water on me. Oh my God, I didn't think that I could still go to church and still have my crystals. I got all this outpouring. Letters and comments and questions and emails and it was amazing. It still is amazing of all the people that were in my same shoes. So I figured I would share a couple of them with you. They're in the book. I figured I would share a couple of the stories with you because I have a bunch of them in the book. Just comments. I have a bunch of them in the book. Just comments. You know, here's one. Witchcraft has always had a pull on me. Hi there. I am a Christian. Have been since I was five or so, a daughter of a Protestant minister. But witchcraft has always had a pull on me, even as a kid. I have read the book by Adelina St. Clair, and it seems so perfect. She wrote that first book, then, as far as I know, about the path of a Christian witch. Do you have any advice, or could point, or could you point me in a good direction? You know, I have a, a oh, it seems so perfect. I have a bunch. Of books to research but due to my upbringing i'm kind of afraid to there's no one here locally classes wise or any covens that would be accepting of a christian witch Woo! i'm afraid so this would be a solitary type path i just feel so overwhelmed and not really sure where to start thanks for your time you know, I got letter after letter after letter like this. As a new witch and a lifelong Christian, I'm glad, no relief, that I'm not alone. You've no idea how long I've searched for something like this. Thank you. I'm not a witch, I don't think, but I love witch energy. Thank you for this page, community. I don't know where there, I don't, I didn't know there were others who believed in Jesus and Wicca. And I'm very happy to be a part of your community. For so long, I have never really quite fit into any category or belief system. I cannot tell you how nice it feels to find people who understand and relate to what I feel. Peace to all. You know, I finally feel like I have found my home with God's grace. I love Jesus and I love my craft. I was constantly told by family that I couldn't be both a witch and love Jesus. That's not true. Now I know differently. I have no words to express my joy and inner peace. Thank you. So we have letter after letter after letter. So this is what I want to say to you about your path as a Christian witch. That when you go beyond the people who are the naysayers who say you can't do it, there's always going to be naysayers. It's okay. Naysayers don't run your life. When you go beyond that, you will find that there is a whole community of people ready, willing, and able to embrace you on your path as a Christian witch, loving Christ and the craft. 
whatever that means for you. So that's how I came out. Now, I've done a couple of uh, really intense spells and spiritual practices, not a couple of them, a lot, to integrate Christ in the craft. Because like I said, I used to be an inner conflict in a mind anymore. After, after I came out, I didn't have inner conflict anymore. I had fear, you know, terror, which I talk about in the book. I didn't have inner conflict anymore. I had integration. You see, I know who I am. And that frightens some people. And when you know who you really are, you will necessarily be a threat to some people because you are threatening what they're used to, what they have become comfortable with, and what they know. And it's okay for you to threaten what people know by your very existence. It's not like I'm going around trying to threaten people. That's not it. I'm coming from love. It's that when you speak a different language, when you do something different, when you upset the status quo, people are naturally going to take it as an affront and a threat, just like people took it as a front and an affront and a threat when Martin Luther King said, wait a minute, we got to vote all people, not just some people. All people have got to vote. You see, he wasn't coming to threaten anyone. He was peaceful. People took it as a threat because they knew that something about their lifestyle was about to get upset. And they didn't like that because humans don't like change. But after a while, everyone will applaud you because after a while, Martin Luther King, as we know, achieved that wonderful dream and vision. And now all people have the ability to vote. So people will take it as a threat, even when you're not seeking to threaten them. I don't seek to threaten anyone. People take it as a threat. So that's up to them. And that has nothing to do with you. You keep on your divine path of where you're going. Now, let me address the next question. Well, what about the Bible? What about the Bible? You know, for all the Christians that say, the Bible's against witchcraft, the Bible's against witchcraft, the Bible's against witchcraft. And let me share this. I was a Jehovah's Witness, a fundamentalist Christian. I mean, beat you over the head with the Bible. It was pretty, I was pretty, I was pretty gone before I left the cult, and I talk all about it in the book. This is what I know. If you want to find, listen very carefully to what I'm about to say, because this is going to be mind-blowing. If you want to find evidence for what you believe, you'll find it. If you want to learn and expand your awareness and really discover truth, you'll find it. Either way, you always find what you're looking for. You can't not find what you're looking for. So when people come to the Christian witches community and they ask questions, I always wonder who's asking the question because if a fundamentalist Christian is asking a question like, well, what about what the Bible says about witchcraft? Is it a question or is it a attempt to hold on to what you already know. That's what we just have to ask ourselves, right? So if you're really curious and you really want to make a search, I will share with you what I have discovered after studying and studying and studying this morning. This was my study from this morning. My Bible, the book of Honorius, the sworn book of Honorius, taking copious notes in my in this journal, in this magical journal, of which I have many, and the key of Solomon. Yes, we do a lot. We do uh, ceremonial magic and uh, Solomonic magic in the Covenant of Christian Witches Mystery School. So this was my study this morning, just this morning, okay? This is what I can tell you. If you read the Bible and let someone else tell you what it means, you will not understand the Bible. I'm a minister. I'm not here to tell you what the Bible means. You'll have to discover that for yourself. Read it. Study it. Understand what peoples were they talking to in the Bible. Hebrew people. People in the Mesopotamia, people in Babylon, people in Egypt. All of these groups of people had different practices. Study. When you study the Bible, ask yourself 
self with a capital S. What does this mean? I bid you go beyond what your pastor has told you. Because, not that your pastor is wrong, I don't call anyone wrong. There is only a limited amount of information in any church. The church doesn't teach you. The church is the outer tradition. It does not teach you the deep mysteries that we talk about here in Christian Witches. It just doesn't. No outer religious order does. The re outer religious orders are for all of the masses, right? The masses are not ready to learn about esoteric occult information from ancient and the ancient mysteries I mean, most people don't even know how to meditate for more than five minutes they certainly are not <laughs> receptacles for the ancient mysteries of the universe this is not going to happen right so we have the church for that but there is a quote in the book i have many 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 magical quotes in the book and there is a quote in the book that says that after a period of time if you are asking questions and you really want to know the answer, you will go beyond the church. You will go far beyond the church. Because the answers that you seek are not in church. The answers that you seek are not in any religious structure that you will find. So when they say, well, the Bible says no witchcraft. I'm going to share with you one aspect of what I learned about this. As I continue to study the Bible, so I love the Bible. I view, view the Bible as a ginormous magic book. I love the Bible. Here's what I've discovered about the Bible. You must go within and ask higher self, your holy guardian angel, what does this mean? And more importantly, what does this mean for me here now? And get a rhema word, which is distinct from a logos, from the logos. The rhema word is the right here, right now answer to what I need, what I'm looking for. And if you go into the Bible and take off your Christian glasses, right? We all had on Christian glasses. Maybe some, some of us are still wearing, we're reading the Bible with Christian glasses on. That means you're going to find in the Bible everything that's going to support what you already believe, and that's all you're going to see. Because none of us are ready and willing and able to see something that we don't want to see. You're not going to see what you don't want to see. Now, what I did was I took the glasses off. Because I believe what A Course in Miracles says, above all else I want to see, above all else I want to see clearly I wanted to see. I wanted to get all the secrets of the universe. I wanted to be open to understanding and learning. And people in the Christian faith say, well, if you're open to devil and the demon's going to come in and, hey, you too open it. That's not true. I went and, and studied for myself. I said, well, let me find out for myself. And that's what I would offer you, that you find out for yourself. Because Christians will tell you, and they told me the same thing. No, 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 you can't be studying all that stuff. Because all that stuff is going to get in there. It's going to pollute you. It's going to open you up to some spirits and stuff that you just can't handle. That's what they told me. And I'm sure they had a good reason for telling me that they were trying to protect me. And they were being loving and kind in the way that they knew how to be loving and kind. I just knew my soul wanted more. So my soul said, thank you for sharing. But I'm going to go find out for myself. You know, it's sort of like there were two frogs in the bottom of a well. And one frog was looking up and he saw a round circle of light. Every day it would get light and then it would get dark. It was a round circle. The two frogs, they're in the bottom of the well. And one frog said, I'm going to go up and get out of here. The other one said, No! No, you got to stay in the bottom of this well. Don't go anywhere. And the other one said, but something is telling me that there's something up there. No, it's not safe. See, it's safe down here in the bottom of this well. I'm not saying that church is the bottom of the well. This is a metaphor. It's safe down here in the bottom of the well. Don't go up there. Well, the one frog said, you know what? Thank you for telling me that it's not safe up there. But you know what? I'm going to go <laughs> myself and find out for my own damn self. And that frog jumped and jumped and jumped and leaped out of the well. 
And lo and behold, there was a whole world outside the well. So I say this to say, leap, because there's a whole world beyond what you think you know. Only if you're feeling called. If you're not feeling called, stay in the well. So the Bible. You know, what about Deuteronomy? What about the scriptures that say, thou shall not suffer a witch to live? What about the Bible that condemns witchcraft? Well, let's go into one example. In one example, God says in to the Israelites, in the beginning of the Bible, the books of Moses, the first five books of the Bible, right? He says in the in there, he, you know, Yahweh, the God of the of the Hebrew scriptures, right? The Old Testament as it's called. Don't divine. Don't do divination. Yet, if you notice, he told Aaron not only to do divination with the Umam and the Thummim, the, the two uh, sort of like casting lots or like you would do divination with tarot. Divination is in the Bible. Just read it. You'll find divination in the Bible. He told the high priest Aaron how to actually conduct divination. And he had a breastplate with 12 crystals on it. The crystals are all uh, crystals that we use right now in magic. And this breastplate that he had on had the 12 crystals. And each crystal represented one of the 12 tribes of, tribes of Israel, which 12 is a recurring theme in the Bible, of course. Watch the movie Zeitgeist. You will understand the connection to the constellations, right? This is all astrology. This is all in the Bible. It all means something. The Bible has many layers of meaning. The Bible is metaphysical, allegorical, metaphorical, symbolic, uh, you know, prophetic. It, it's symbolism. It's sign. It's numerology. It's gematria. gematria. It is so much, so many levels of understanding in the Bible. So why would he tell people not to engage in divination, but then at the same time turn around and tell Aaron, the high priest of all the people, not only to do divination, but how to do it. The specifics of how to do divination. Why? Well, if you read it carefully, it says that he didn't, God gave the command for people who were not versed, the rank and file people who are just wandering around not doing the spiritual practices that a person like you or I would do if we're practicing magic. Of course, don't do divination. You don't know what the hell you're doing. And yes, you may be opening yourself, not to some demons or devil taking over you, you may be going places in spirit realms that your consciousness has not yet been prepared for. So it is a safety mechanism. I'm not going to give my grandbaby, uh, <laughs> you know, an electrical cord to play with. When you begin to work magic, to learn these ancient mysteries, you will find, as I'm doing right now, buzzing. You will find that your nervous system, your energetic body, becomes tuned up and tuned up and tuned up in meditation. And there's spiritual exercises for being able to anchor the energy that would allow one to conduct communion with higher realms, such as angels and archangels. This is a vast amount of energy. And this is not energy that you're just going to be casually, hey, uh, yeah, let me just go and run and talk to Archangel Michael in between, you know, watching the housewives and frying up some fried chicken. I mean, it doesn't work that way, right? Magic, divination, the magical arts and sciences, which I pray you will take he too and really give yourself to because it's a beautiful path if that's your soul calling requires preparation of your consciousness tuning up of your consciousness raising your vibration changing your vibratory field changing your literally your nervous system because if your nervous system is 
exposed to currents of energy that you're not prepared for yet is harmful. It's harmful. You can short circuit. That's why God told everyone don't run out there and do divination. <laughs> we can't have everybody running around doing that. Yet God gave the diviners the exact formula on how to do divination. Let's go to another example. God said, don't, don't do necromancy. Yet, we have in the Bible where the king, King Saul, went to a necromancer, a witch. And the witch of Endor, as we all know, the witch of Endor story, right? And the witch of Endor did pull up the dead Samuel. She pulled up Samuel. Now, Samuel was a prophet of God. Why would Samuel, all you got to do is just start asking questions about these things. And these things will start to reveal themselves to you as you continue to study and apply yourself in devotion and prayer and meditation. I am deeply devotional. I am deeply devotional. I am deeply meditative and reflective. So this was a prophet of God that came up. The witch of indoor channeled them. She was a necromancer. And a necromancer is a person who can talk to the spirits of the dead and divine information from, from the spirits of the dead, right? We have geomancy. We have necromancy. So she asked him. Samuel gave her the accurate answer. She relayed that answer to King Saul. And the exact, same, the exact thing that was conveyed in the necromancy divination was exactly what happened. So you have to start asking yourself bigger, different questions and not just listen to what they told you in church because what they're telling us in church is, no, 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 which crap is it the devil? Well, there's so much more to the story than that. Yet, if you're not ready to see it yet, you will not. Next, this morning I was studying, I'll give you another example from the Bible. This morning I was studying the three magical books of Solomon. This is the, the greater key of Solomon, the lesser key of Solomon, and uh, the Testament of Solomon. And you would be amazed at how much Bible information is in this, right? So first, first of all, Solomon was one of the greatest magicians who ever walked the planet. And by the way, I just have to say, because this is the Christian Witches book launch, Confessions of a Christian Witch book launch, I just got to remind you, if you want to hop over and pick her up, you can. She's at... She's at Amazon.com. Confessions of a Christian Witch. <gasps> so amazing. So amazing. Kindle edition. No trees were hurt in the making of this book. <laughs> so here I was studying the Testament of Solomon in the back. Okay. So I was doing a deep study of the Testament of Solomon. And in the Testament of Solomon, something very interesting happened. There was this young man that Solomon really loved. This is how Solomon got started with his whole magical ring and all of his, his other magic. Because he already had the wisdom, but he wasn't doing the magic where he could contain spirits, cast out spirits, get spirits to do what he wanted them to do, talk to higher realms, talk to angels, all of that. Like what we do in the Covenant of Christian, which is Mystery School, right? Join us in Sedona for the next class of the Covenant of Christian, which is Mystery School coming up. So... He, there was this young man that he really, really liked a lot. And the young man was being accosted by a, a spirit, an evil spirit. And he was wasting away. He was getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And this is a sign a lot of times that some supernatural entities have now come on the scene and are doing untoward things to a person. By the way, share this. Share, share, share with whomever you think desires to have this information. So Solomon was talking to this young man. He's like, What's going on with you? Like, I give you double the money and I give you double the food. This is how Solomon was building the temple in Jerusalem. And he's like, you're wasting away. Like, what's happening? He said, my soul is being sucked dry, sucked out of me by a demon, by a spirit. And Solomon was like, what spirit? What are you, what are you talking about? Tell me about this. And because Solomon really cared for this young man. And he said, he comes, you know, at night. There's a sign right there. He comes at night and uh, he takes away half my food and half my pay and he sucks my thumb. 
and my soul, I can feel like my energy is draining off of me because that's exactly what a lot of untoward spirits do. They need energy, so they just suck energy from people, right? It doesn't work exactly like that, but yet there are energy vampires in the universe, right? So this, this evil spirit was drawing energy from this young man. And this young, and Solomon said, what? Okay. What did Solomon do to get the answer? He went and prayed. He prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. God, how can we take care of this? How can we help this young man? He prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And guess what happened? He prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed so much. Because Solomon is deeply devotional. Prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. So guess what happened? The archangel Michael came down. And the archangel Michael gave him a ring and said, this is how you handle this spirit. This is how you handle these spirits. You have this ring. And this ring, you know, the ring of Solomon, it had on it a sigil, right? What was it? A pentalpha. They call it a pentalpha, also known as a pentacle. What is a pentacle? Five-pointed star. Uh, five A's intermingled. That's how the Archangel Michael described the Our Pentagram that you'll see on the cover of the book, right? On the cover of the book, you see the Christian Witch's logo, which is the five-pointed star with a cross at the top, right? So the five-pointed star with the cross at the top is Christian Witches, and that symbolizes, you know, Christ consciousness integrated into the, the five points, earth, air, fire, water, and the fifth element, ether, right? Ether going up to Christ consciousness. That's what this symbol means. So, it's five-pointed star. Uh, he said it's five A's intermingled. And he gave him a seal, seal of Solomon. And it was on a ring. And it was cut into a stone. And he said, with this, you can command all of those spirits. Well, Solomon is like, what? And he's giving thanks and thanks and thanks and thanks because now he can break people free. You see, I have the same thing that I'm about. I'm about freedom, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, and financially. I'm about supporting people and being free. Free of preconceived notions, free of what mom and daddy said, free of what the pastors say. Free your mind. The rest will follow. That's what in vogue said is true. So Solomon says to the young boy, he calls the boy back. He says, listen, when that demon comes again, throw this ring at him. At his chest and tell him King Solomon said come here I bid you come to me and don't worry if the demon starts and thrashing about and and fire and smoke and flames and sulfur and stinkiness and all that stuff some of these evil spirits try to do you tell him come to me because I got something for him and he was like okay he took the ring sure enough that night here comes the demon he throws the the, the, the young boy throws the uh, the the ring, Solomon's ring, at the demon's chest. <sighs> you know, of course it's going to sub subdue it. Because this came from the Archangel Michael. Brings the demon in front of Solomon. What's going on? Who are you? What are you doing here? And it was Ornias, the demon Ornias. O-R-N-I-A-S. And he asked him, who are you? What's your name? And what are you doing here? And all that. Now, before the demon even got to Solomon, and the boy threw the, the ring at the demon, and the demon's like, ah. the demon starts talking to the boy. Listen, no, no, no. I don't want to go with you. No, I don't want to go to King Solomon. I'll give you gold. <laughs> spirit's going to try to bribe you. I'll give you gold. Because a lot of these spirits, they have access to gold and silver and hidden treasures and all that. I do, I'll give you gold and silver. Just don't bring me to him. He's like, no, no, no. I'm not listening to you because Solomon told me just come straight, running straight to him and you're going to come running right behind me. You come. And so the, the demon came. So Solomon starts to question the demon. What, who are you? And then he says to him, uh, what, what destroys you? And see, the demon is beholden to have to do whatever Solomon says because the ring, the seal he had gotten from the Archangel Michael, right? And so he told him, you know, about himself. And then he's like, well, you know, what else is going on? And Solomon began to make an, 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 an inquiry. Well, this is what I did because I am about casting out demons, 
bringing people back to life, raising the dead, healing the sick. Many issues that people have are supernatural. Many people, many issues people have. I am now convinced that just about everything that really trips people up is some kind of supernatural activity that can be dealt with in spiritual means. And so what did I do? Because this is what God told me as my own path. And what I'm here to do is be a Christ. Like I think all of us are here to do is be a Christ or a Buddha or a Krishna or whatever that means for you to become an enlightened one. See, we're not home until all the souls are home to God. So this is what I did. I began to make my, today, I started this new journal today, on 11, 11, 11. We are here on 11, 11, 11 together. I started to make this journal. And the journal I included in there, not only the teachings of Solomon here, but also the scriptures that correspond to it, as well as understanding by what means these demons are subdued. So this was the demon Ornias. And how is he subdued? He's subdued by the archangel Uriel. Okay? So you want to understand how to not understand uh, particularly demons. That's my own uh, study. I don't, I don't have an issue with demonology. Demonology and angelology are very important to me because if you're a doctor... You want to know how to be able to get rid of things, right? And Christ did the same thing. And Christ said, what's your name? Who are you? And he knew exactly what to do with all the spirits, right? They have names. Well, he asked, who are you subject to? Because this is one thing that you will find out as you study that all of these demons, Orneas, Asmodeus, some call him Asmodeus, Asmodeus is taught up, uh, spoken of in the book of Tobit. The archangel Raphael subdues him. Even the Essenes had a secret lore. And their secret lore was simply knowing the name of the angel that constrains the demon that you're dealing with. You see, and what are these demons doing? Well, a myriad of things. And each of them has their own particular things that they do. So Asmodeus, if you read about him in the book of Tobit, you will see that he is one that comes to people at night and he confounds marriages. He will uh, cause people who are newly married to never be, never consummate marriage. He will cause men who are married to stray in the day and in the night to other women and not single women, women that also have a mate. He causes all kinds of mayhem in relationships. We see this. It's rampant. It's rampant. And not that I'm about any monogamy or any, you know, old constructs of marriage or how things are supposed to be. I'm not. I'm divorced two times and I'm my own woman. I'm not marrying. That whole marriage thing to me is a construct. But anyway, what we're talking about is the energy of it. What is the energy of this? The energy of it is dissension in relationships. That's all supernatural activity. Another one. She, uh, another one of the demons gripes babies. Now this happened when I had my babies. Every so often, do you notice that a baby will just, they'll gripe their stomach that my mother and, and the grandmothers used to call it the baby's gripe. Their, their stomach is gripe. It's like somebody just grabbed to squeeze their stomach and they, they let out this bellow, this holler. That is just this, like, what is wrong with this baby? And sometimes the baby already ate dry, sleep, you know, with sleep maybe. There are actually spirits that come and they just gripe babies, okay? If we knew this, I wish somebody had taught us this when we were little rather than just teaching us uh, Noah and Jonah and uh, Saul on the road to Tarsus. I mean, all that was good, but could you also teach us some of the more um, offensive experiences of casting out this stuff like say like like uh like uh jesus was doing and like all people following in christ's path will want to be able to do is just exercise your spiritual power and authority that's really all it is it's your spiritual power and authority so i say all that to say this if you read magical books you will see reference after reference after reference after reference after reference to the bible 
The Bible has a tremendous amount of magic in it, from divination to necromancy to crystals to the whole book of Revelation, crystals and angels and demons, and full of magic. Now, you wouldn't see that if you don't want to see it. I'm not here trying to convince you of anything. I don't need to convince you of anything. That's not my job as a minister. My job is to shine the light, share what I know, share, 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 and you make your own decision for yourself. Study to show that self-approved. Next. So that's the Bible. Let's go to the next question that I get a lot. How do I start, Kaisi? They call me Kaisi. How do I start, Kaisi? Or Rev, or Reverend Val, or whatever you call me, it's all good. Uh, I won't say whatever you call me is all good. I will say <laughs> Kaisi or Reverend Val. So... Here's how you start. You start how you start everything on the spiritual path with intention. Everything begins with intention. What are you intending? Well, it's a choice. Intention is a function and an outgrowth, outgrowth of choice. You make a choice. You're here to make a choice. You're a choice-making machine. And your choices are creating your life step by step, but choice by choice by choice. So choose wisely. So intention is powered by choice, right? Because you say, okay, I'm going to live my true destiny. That's what I said. I made a choice. I had done what they said in the cult. I, you do this and do that and do this and do that and don't do that and don't have sex with this person and don't do that and don't do that. And after a while, I was like, you know what? Let me find out for myself. So I put away all of that. I deconstructed my entire belief house, right? I, I broke down my whole belief house myself. And I left one thing, I, one thing, save one thing, one belief that I knew. One thing I knew, it wasn't even a belief, it was a knowing, it still is a knowing, God is love. Now all the rest of the stuff they told me, I don't know. Jesus coming, Jesus coming again, second coming of Christ, some people going to heaven, some people are not, some people in hell, some people are in purgatory, some people in all that other stuff. You'll have to make up your own mind about all that. I'm not here to tell you what to think, I'm te I pray to share with you how to think. And religion does the exact opposite. Religion doesn't teach you how to think. Religion tells you what to think. So, I said to myself, I'm choosing to live my destiny. I'm choosing to honor the magical self that I've been ever since I was a little kid seeing spirits in my grandmother's house where we lived. I'm choosing to honor this third eye wide open that when I was eight and I would look at my mother's friends, I could see what was going on with them. You know what? Let me honor my own damn self. Okay? I'm choosing to honor myself. That's my choice. My intention is to honor who I am as a magical being in this lifetime and live my full or God potential as a magical being. I don't care what nobody else says or does, who it's okay with or not. I don't need permission from anyone to do the thing I came here to do. I am about my father's business. That's it and that's all. People get to say what they say. It's all good. So I set that intention. I'm going to live my magical self. God made me a witch. God told me clearly. God made me a witch. God made me magical. God gave me all these gifts. Gifts of healing. Gifts of prophecy. Gifts of third eye open. All the gifts God gave you. Time to use them. So I said, I'm going to give myself to myself. I'm going to follow as Alistair Crawley said, my true will. Your true will is your true reason for being. I'm going to follow that and that alone regardless. And let's just see where it takes me. When you start there, new witches, if you're new, if you're already a practicing Christian witch, beautiful, share how you do it. Because we love the conversation around here. We love it. Because I learned so much from all of us here. We learn so much from each other. So, the first thing is, make a choice. I see so many people who are operating in fear. They're just afraid. 
They're afraid to be a witch. They're afraid to be witchy. They're afraid of their own powers. They're afraid to be psychic. They're, they had a dream about something and they're afraid to tell a person the message. They're afraid to pick up, pick up their tarot deck around their Christian friends. They're afraid to let their Christian friends know they have crystals. They're just afraid. I used to be there. Perfect love casteth out fear. Okay? Nothing to be afraid of here. Nothing to be afraid of. You're an infinite being, a multidimensional being. Now, when you set, set that intention and you say, you know what? I'm going to live what I'm here to live and let everyone live what everyone else is here to live. Something very magical happens. All of a sudden, you don't care so much what people think and you don't care at all what people think about you. Well, maybe you might care a tiny bit, but it's going to dramatically decrease. Because you're not living for other people. You made an intention and a choice that you're going to live your true will, your soul's urge, your soul's unction. This is not from the human head. This is from your true soul calling, your true reason for being. Now, when you make that decision, something else is going to happen. Your human self is no longer on the throne in the driver's seat. It now shifts and your human self goes to the background and the true divine self takes over. Like, thank you very much for relinquishing the steering wheel. No problem. You got it, God. You got it, spirit, source, whatever you want to call it. God, goddess, I am. When you understand something is happening in this whole universe, let me get on board with it, not I got to make something happen. Your whole life changes. And that's how I'm able to go from country to country to country in the month of October. As you know, October 1st to the 5th, we have the opening of the Christian Witches Mystery School in the Solomonic Tradition in the Salem, Massachusetts Retreat. As you know, probably a week after that, I went to Vid Summit in Los Angeles. A week after that, I got the opportunity to lead. Week before last, just got back from Bali, Indonesia. Got the opportunity to take an incredible group of women to Bali, Indonesia to write their books on a spiritual retreat. Soon, in, in uh, about three weeks' time, we'll be in Sedona. We pray that you join us and will be with us at the Sedona retreat. And if you register before 11 p.m. tonight, I have a special surprise for you. So go to ValerieLove.com. And uh, see if you can enter to win five tower, one of five tower readings that I'm giving away in Sedona free. I'll say complimentary. So when you give yourself to this big, I found out something way bigger than me is happening in the universe. Way bigger than me. And it would appear that we have the opportunity to be on board with it and be lifted and, and, and raised up through not effort. Through alignment, through divine flow, through our ascension, by our acquiescence. So there's this great big thing that's happening as your life. And it wants to lift you. But we're so busy thinking that we know what's best for us and thinking that we got the plan for our lives when we really don't. So I said all that to say, that was a long way of saying this. How do I start? You start by making a choice. You make the choice. I'm going to live what my soul came here to live. You set an intention. Show me my magical path. You surrender in trust. You let this great thing that is source, God, holy guardian angel, take you somewhere really high and really wonderful. And then... Here's a very important thing that I talk about in the book. And, and when we have the papers cover, the paper version of the book, and we'll have a different cover because you've seen the new cover. This is the book that is the collector's edition. <laughs> this is the collector's edition. There's only 11 of these in the entire world. So if you have one of these, it is probably worth a whole lot um, or will be one day. Soon, one day, you might see it on eBay for thousands of dollars. I don't know. There's only 11 in the whole world. But this now is uh, Confessions of a Christian Witch. This is a book launch party. So there you have her. She's on Amazon right now. Hop over and get the Kindle version. No book, no trees were harmed in the making of this book. So what I talk about in the book 
is beware. Beware of trying to move forward in the way you think you're supposed to move forward in magic. Man, when I first started studying the occult decades ago, I was studying, 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 getting this book and getting this book and getting this book and getting this book. And I was voracious. It was like a bear that woke up from a hibernation. And this is what I found. Some of us are overeaters and we don't digest. And some of us take on information before we're ready for it and burn out. Chill. This path is not about time. You got plenty of time. This path is not about um, doing it right. This path is not about getting somewhere. You're already there. It's being. This path is so much for me about connection with source on a conscious level, on a continuous basis, that the books just come to you. The next teacher just comes to you. The next circle just comes to you. The next group of people just comes to you. It just all comes to you. And if you just trust that, you'll just walk along with it and it'll just flow, flow, flow. Let it flow. Okay? I do have a very specific four-step process that I put in the book. And this is a, there's five parts to the book. And in part four, where I give you resources, actually it's part three, where I give you resources in the book. Here it is. How to come out the broom closet. I have a, a very detailed four step, uh, four steps to how to come out the broom closet. If you're still in the broom closet, if you're not still in the broom closet, definitely. You've already probably taken those four steps. Lastly, let's conclude with this. This has been an incredible experience. I so thank you for being with me on this journey. I so thank you for being with me on this journey. These seven years have flown by just like that. This Christian Witches Facebook fan page, I just put it up because, you know, the inspiration once again told me to put it up. And trust me, I was so afraid my fingers were shaking on the keyboard as I was making the group. I'm making a fan page like, oh my God, they're going to kill me, God. So it's okay to be afraid. It's just not okay to be stuck there. And this is what I'll conclude with. Honor you. I thank you. I love you. Honor you. You're not here for other people. Tell yourself, I'm only here for God. Or I'm only here for goddess. Or I'm only here for source. Honor you. You have got to honor you. Your walk. Your path. Your calling. Your gifts. Your service to humanity. More than getting outside approval. Being liked. Having people feel okay with what you're doing? Fuck that shit. Yeah, I'm a minister and I said it. Fuck that shit. People don't have to be okay with you. People don't have to approve of you. You don't need permission. You're not here for anyone but God. Goddess, I am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Visit ChristianWitches.com. Make sure that you come with us to an incredible experience soon with us live at either Sedona or Salem. We'll be back at Salem soon again with another Christian Witches retreat. Come on the page and share, 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 share your journey. Subscribe to the Christian Witches Facebook, uh, to the Facebook fan page and to this Christian Witches YouTube channel. And follow Christian Witches on Instagram. And spread the word of Christian Witches. And join one of the Christian Witches groups. There's plenty of Christian Witches groups. Plenty of Christian Witches info you can now get on Facebook. Which I love. And by all means, pick up the book. Only $9.99. $9.99. Wow, that's a deal. So I love you. I thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate all that you bring. And guess what? Even on YouTube, we now have Christian Witches merch. <gasps> We now have Christian Witches merch. <gasps> so go to ChristianWitches.com. Oh, my God. All right. That's it, family. Peace. Mwah, 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 mwah. Can you see out? <laughs> Happy 11, 11, 11. Mm -hmm. Happy 11, 11, 11.